This story is called The Puppy Who Wanted a Boy. One day, Petey, who was a puppy, said to his mother, I'd like a boy for Christmas. His mother, who was a dog, said she guessed he could have a boy if he was a very good puppy. So the day before Christmas, Petey's mother asked, Have you been a very good puppy? Oh, yes, said Petey. I didn't frighten the cat. You didn't, said Petey's mother. Well, I just frightened her a little, said Petey, and I didn't shoe any shoes. Not any, said his mother. Just a teeny weeny chew, said Petey. All right, said his mother. I guess you've been good. Anyway, you're awfully little. I shall go out and get you a boy for Christmas. So here's a picture of Petey, the little puppy, and his mama dog. But when Petey's mother came back, she looked worried. How would you like a soft white rabbit with pink ears for Christmas, she said to Petey. No, thanks, said Petey. How about some fish? They're nice, said Petey's mother. I don't like fish, said Petey. I'd like a boy. Petey, said his mother, there are no boys to be had. Not one could I find. They're terribly short on boys this year. Petey felt as if he couldn't stand it if he didn't have a boy. Finally, his mother said, there now, there might be a boy somewhere. Perhaps you could find some dog who would give his boy away. So Petey hopefully started off. It wasn't long before he saw a collie racing with a boy on a bicycle. Petey trembled with joy. If I had a boy on a bicycle, said Petey, I could run like everything. I'll ask the collie politely if he'll give his boy away. So Petey leaped after the bicycle. He called out to the collie, excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? So here's the boy on the bicycle and the dog, the collie. And then Petey's looking on thinking, well, that would be nice to have that boy. But the collie said, no, he definitely didn't in a dreadful tone of voice. Petey sat down. He watched the collie and his boy until they were out of sight. I didn't really want a boy on a bicycle anyway, said Petey. After a while, he saw a red setter playing ball with a boy. Petey was just delighted. If I had a boy to play ball with, said Petey, I'd catch the ball smack in my mouth. But he remembered how cross the collie had been. So he sat down on the sidewalk and called out politely, Excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? But the setter said, no, he definitely didn't, in a terrifying tone of voice. Oh, well, said Petey, trotting off. I don't think playing ball is much. So here is the setter that he's asking. The setter's boy, the setter he was asking. After a while, he met a Scotty, walking with his boy and carrying a package in his mouth. Now that is a good kind of boy, said Petey. If I had a boy to carry packages for, there might be some dog biscuit or cookies in the package. But he remembered how cross the collie and the setter had been. So he stayed across the street and shouted at the top of his lungs, but polite as could be, excuse me, do you want to give your boy away? The Scotty had his mouth full of package, but he managed to say, no, he definitely didn't. And he showed his sharp teeth to Petey. I guess that wasn't the kind of boy I wanted either, said poor Petey. But my goodness, where will I find a boy? But Petey went on and on, up busy streets, dodging the cars, looking in stores and around corners, down quiet lanes where dogs rushed to their fences and yelped at him. He asked every dog politely, but he couldn't find a single dog who would give his boy away. So here's the Scotty with a package in his mouth. As it was getting dark, he came to a large building on the very edge of town. Petey was going to buy very slowly because his paws hurt. When he saw a sign over the door, the sign said, Orphan's Home. I know what orphans are, Petey said to himself. They're children who have no dog to take care of them. Maybe I could find a boy here. He padded slowly up the walk. He was so tired he could hardly lift his little paws. Then Petey stopped. He listened. He could hear music. He looked through the window. He could see a lighted Christmas tree and children singing carols. Petey looked some more. On the front step of the orphan's home 
all by himself sat a boy. He looked lonely. So here's the picture of the boy sitting by himself. Looks like he needs a friend. Petey gave a glad little cry. He forgot all about being tired. He leapt up the walk and landed in the boy's lap. Sniff, sniff went Petey's little nose. Wiggle, wag went Petey's tail. He licked the boy with his warm, wet tongue. How glad the boy was to see Petey. He put both his arms around the little dog and hugged him tight. Then the front door opened. Goodness, Dickie, a lady said. What are you doing out here? Come on into the Christmas tree. Petey sat very still. The boy looked up at the lady. Then he looked down at Petey. The boy said, I've got a puppy. Can he come too? A puppy? The lady came over and looked down at Petey. Why, she said, you're a nice dog. Wherever did you come from? Yes, bring him in. Come on, puppy, said the boy, and in they scampered. So here's a picture of the little boy holding Petey. Petey and the little boy look so happy together. A crowd of boys was playing around the Christmas tree. All the boys rushed at Petey. They all wanted to pick him up. They all wanted to pet him. Petey wagged his tail. He wagged his fat little body. He frisked about and kissed every boy who came near. Can he stay? The boys asked. Yes, said the lady. He may stay. Come on, puppy, Dickie said. Get your supper. We'll fix you a nice warm bed, cried another little boy. We'll all play games with you, said a third. Whoever would think, said Petey to himself, that I'd get 50 boys for Christmas. So here's a picture of all the boys fussing over Petey. And that's the end.